He was a busy mouse, searching everywhere, touching his whiskers to the grass and looking. He was busy as all mice are, busy with mice things. But once in a while, he would hear an odd sound. He would prick his ears and lift his head, squinting hard to see, his whiskers wriggling in the air, and he would wonder. One day he scurried up to a fellow mouse and asked him, Do you hear a roaring in your ears, my brother? No, no. No. Answered the other mouse, not lifting his busy nose from the ground. I hear nothing. I am busy now. Talk to me later. He asked another mouse the same question, and the mouse looked at him strangely. Are you foolish in the head? What sound? He asked and slipped into a hole in a fallen cottonwood tree. The little mouse shrugged his whiskers and busied himself, determined to forget the whole matter. But there was that roaring again. It was faint, very faint, but it was there. He decided to investigate the sound just a little. Leaving the other busy mice, he scurried a little way away and listened again. There it was. He was listening hard when suddenly someone said, Hello, little brother. Mouse almost jumped right out of his skin. He arched his back and tail and was about to run. Hello, it is I, Brother Raccoon. What are you doing here all by yourself, little brother? The mouse blushed and put his nose almost to the ground, then said timidly, I hear a roaring in my ears, and I am investigating it. A roaring in your ears. What you hear, little brother, is the river. The river? What is a river? Walk with me, and I will show you the river. Little Mouse was terribly afraid, but he was determined to find out once and for all about the roaring. I can return to my work after this thing is settled, and possibly this thing will aid me in my busy examining and collecting. And my brothers and sisters all said it was nothing. I will show them. I will ask Raccoon to return with me, and I will have proof. All right, Raccoon, my brother, lead on to the river. I will walk with you. Little Mouse walked with Raccoon, his heart pounding in his breast. Raccoon was taking him upon strange paths, and Little Mouse smelled the scent of many things that had gone by this way. Many times he became so frightened he almost turned back. Finally, they came to the river. It was huge and breathtaking, deep and clear in places, and murky in others. Little Mouse was unable to see across it because it was so great. It roared, sang, cried, and thundered on its course. Little Mouse saw great and small pieces of the world carried along on its surface. It is powerful. It is a great thing. But here, let me introduce you to a friend.
In a smoother, shallower place was a lily pad, bright and green. Sitting upon it was a frog, almost as green as the pad it sat on. The frog's white belly stood out clearly. Hello, little brother. Welcome to the river. I must leave you. But do not fear, little brother, for Frog will care for you now. And Raccoon left, looking along the river bank for food that he might wash and eat. Little Mouse approached the water and looked into it. He saw a frightened mouse reflected there. Who are you? Are you not afraid, being so far out, into the great river? No, I am not afraid. I have been given the gift from birth to live both above and within the river. When winter comes and freezes this medicine, I cannot be seen. But all the while Thunderbird flies, I am here. To visit me, one must come when the world is green. I, my brother, am the keeper of the water. Amazing! Would you like to have some medicine power? Medicine power? Me? Yes, yes, if it is possible. Medicine. Little Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could and jumped. And when he did, he saw far off the sacred mountains. Little Mouse could hardly believe his eyes, but there they were. Then he fell back to earth and landed in the river. Little Mouse scrambled back to the bank. He was wet and frightened nearly to death. You tricked me. Wait, you are not harmed. Do not let your fear and anger blind you. What did you see? I, I, I saw... The sacred mountains. And you have a new name. It is Jumping Mouse. Thank you. I want to return to my people and tell them of this thing that has happened to me. Go, go then. Return to your people. It is easy to find them. Keep the sound of the great river in the back of your head. Go opposite to the sound, and you will find your brothers and sisters.
Jumping Mouse returned to the world of the mice. But he found disappointment. No one would listen to him. And because he was wet and had no way of explaining it because there had been no rain, many of the other mice were afraid of him. They believed he had been spat from the mouth of another animal that had tried to eat him. And they all knew that if he had been food for one who wanted him, then he must also be poison for them. Jumping Mouse lived again amongst his people, but he could not forget his vision of the sacred mountains. The memory burned in the mind and heart of Jumping Mouse, and one day he went to the edge of the place of mice and looked out onto the prairie. He looked up for eagles. The sky was full of many spots, each one an eagle. But he was determined to go to the sacred mountains. And gathering all of his courage, he ran as fast as he could onto the prairie. His little heart pounded with excitement and fear. He ran until he came to some sage bushes. He was resting and trying to catch his breath when he saw an old mouse. The patch of sage old mouse lived in was a haven for mice. Seeds were plentiful and there was nesting material and many things to be busy with. Hello and welcome. Jumping Mouse was amazed at such a place and such a mouse. You are truly a great mouse. This is truly a wonderful place, and the eagles cannot see you here either. Yes, and one can see all the beings of the prairie here. The buffalo, antelope, rabbit and coyote. One can see them all from here and know their names. That is marvelous. Can you also see the great river? And the sacred mountains? Yes and no. I know there's a river, but I am afraid that the sacred mountains are only a dream. Forget your passion to see them and stay here with me. There is everything you want here, and it is a good place to be. Jumping Mouse wondered how he could say such a thing. The medicine of the sacred mountains is nothing one can forget. Thank you very much for the meal you have shared with me, old mouse, and also for sharing your home. But I must seek the mountains. You are a foolish mouse to leave here. There is danger on the prairie. Just look up there. See all those spots. You know they are eagles, and they will sure catch you. It was hard for Jumping Mouse to leave, but he gathered his determination and ran hard again. The ground was rough, but he arched his tail and ran with all his might. He could feel the shadow of the spots upon his back as he ran, all those spots. Finally, he ran into a stand of choke cherry trees. Jumping Mouse could hardly believe his eyes. It was cool there and very spacious. And there was water, cherries and seeds to eat, grasses to gather for nests, holes to be explored, and many, many other busy things to do. He was investigating his new domain when he heard very heavy breathing. He quickly investigated the sound and discovered its source. It was a great mound of hair with black horns. It was great buffalo. Jumping Mouse could hardly believe the greatness of the being he saw lying there before him. He was so large that Jumping Mouse could have crawled onto one of his great horns or deep into the fur 
of this magnificent being. Hello, my brother. Thank you for visiting me. Hello, great being. Why are you lying here? I am sick. And I am dying. My medicine has told me that only the eye of a mouse can heal me. But, little brother, there is no such thing as a mouse. Jumping Mouse scurried back into the stand of choke cherries. One of my eyes? One of my eyes? The breathing from the great beast now came harder and slower. He will die if I do not give him my eye. He is too great a being to let die. Jumping Mouse went back to where the great buffalo lay and spoke. I am a mouse, and you, my brother, are a great being. I cannot let you die. I have two eyes, so you may have one of them. The minute he had said it, Jumping Mouse's eye flew out of his head and Buffalo was made whole. He got to his feet, shaking Jumping Mouse's whole world. Thank you, my little brother. I know of your quest for the sacred mountains and of your visit to the great river. You have given me life so that I may give away to the people. I will be your brother forever. Run under my belly and I will take you right to the foot of the sacred mountains. And you need not fear the spots. The eagles cannot see you while you run under me. And they will see nothing but the back of a buffalo. But I cannot go further. I am of the prairie, and I will fall on you if I try to go up the mountains. Jumping Mouse ran under Buffalo, secure and hidden from the spots, but with only one eye, it was frightening. Buffalo's great hooves shook the whole world each time he took a step. Finally, they came to a place and Buffalo stopped. This is where I must leave you. Thank you very much. But you know, it was very frightening running under you with only one eye. I was constantly in fear of your great heart-shaking hooves. Your fear was nothing. For my way of walking is the Sundance way. And I always know where my hooves will fall. Now, I must return to the prairie, my brother. You can always find me there. 
Jumping Mouse immediately began to investigate his new surroundings. There were even more things here than in the other places, busier things and an abundance of seeds and other things mice like. In his investigation of these things, suddenly he ran upon a grey wolf who was sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Hello, brother wolf. The wolf's ears came alert and his eyes shone. Wolf, wolf. Yes, that is what I am. I am grey wolf. But then his mind dimmed and it was not long before he sat quietly again completely without memory as to who he was. Each time Jumping Mouse reminded him who he was, he became excited with the news, but soon would forget. Jumping Mouse went to the centre of this new place and was quiet. Such a great being, but he has no memory. Then suddenly he made up his mind. He scurried back to where the wolf sat and he spoke. Brother wolf. Wolf, wolf. Please, brother grey wolf, please listen to me. I know what will heal you. It is one of my eyes and I want to give it to you. Please take it. When Jumping Mouse stopped speaking, his eye flew out of his head and Grey Wolf was made whole. Tears fell down Grey Wolf's cheek, but his little brother could not see them, for now he was blind. You are a great brother. Now I have my memory. I am the guide to the sacred mountains. I will take you there. There is a great medicine lake there the most beautiful lake in the world. The whole world is reflected in the waters of that lake. The people, the lodges of the people, and all the beings of the prairies and skies. Please take me there. Wolf guided him through the pines to the medicine lake. Jumping Mouse drank the water from the lake and Grey Wolf described the beauty to him. Thank you, my brother. But although I am frightened to be alone, I know you must go that you may show others the way to this place. Grey Wolf left and Jumping Mouse sat trembling in fear. It was no use running for he was blind, and he knew an eagle would find him easily. Soon he felt a shadow on his back and heard the sound that eagles make. He braced himself for the shock. The eagle hit. Jumping Mouse went to sleep. Then he woke up. The surprise of being alive was great, for now he could see. Everything was blurry, but the colours were beautiful. I can see, I can see. A 
faint shape came toward Jumping Mouse. He squinted hard, but the shape remained a blur. Hello, brother. Do you want some medicine? Some medicine for me? Yes, yes. Then crouch down as low as you can and jump as high as you can. Jumping Mouse did as he was instructed. He crouched as low as he could and jumped. The wind caught him and carried him higher. Do not be afraid. Hang on to the wind and trust. Jumping Mouse did. He closed his eyes and hung on to the wind and it carried him higher and higher. He opened his eyes and they were clear. And the higher he went, the clearer they became. Jumping Mouse looked down and saw his old friend upon a lily pad on the beautiful medicine lake. Is that you, Frog? Hello, Jumping Mouse. You have a new name. You are Eagle now. Look. Look at yourself. Jumping Mouse looked. Where his hind legs had been were sharp talons. Where his forelegs had been were wing feathers. And where his nose and whiskers had been was a great curved beak. He spread his wings wide and he flew. And he flew, and he flew. Oh. 